In the last movie we introduced objects, object-oriented programming and in this movie I'm going to continue on to part two of that topic. So as usual I'll get you to go to the address on Dawson.net and click on schedule. We're currently in the fall 2017 semester and you can click on any of these links that will take you to the schedule for this course. Now currently we're in week 12 and our topic is introduction to classes and this link will take you to a PDF document and in the last movie we covered the first half of this document up to screen or page 30 so I'm just going to scroll down now to page 30 and this is where we left the last video so in this movie I'm going to complete uh, the remainder of this document and so we're talking about creating your own classes and how creating a class can help to simplify your program now a student class can create student objects and each object of a student class has its own set of data encapsulated in the object itself and each student object has the ability to call any of the methods of the student class. Now, computer programmed objects are similar in many respects to everyday objects. So think of uh, cars, computers, phones, music systems. These are all objects. Now, every object is unique. So despite the fact that all cars have things in common, for example, they have wheels, engine, a steering wheel, gas pedal, brake pedal. Uh, they have things in common, but every car in the world is a unique object. My car is my object, my car. And you may have your own car. And each one is has its own unique existence. So every car in the world is a unique object. So how are cars like programmer uh, computer programmed objects? How how what are the similarities? Well, let's think about cars. They all have things in common. But despite having things in common, each car is a unique object, so it exists on its own. Now, these are some of the things that relate to computer programmed objects. The data of the object is stored inside the object. The data can only be changed by methods which are available to that object and depending on data values another method may be called and let's have a look at these in specific details data related to the object are stored inside the object so for example you have a car and your car stores information on the current speed on how much fuel you have and in some cases the direction you're moving and the data related to the object is stored inside the object. This is known as information hiding, uh, more commonly known as encapsulation. So the data of an object is stored inside the object. And the data are only changed by methods. Or These are functions which are also available to the object. So, for example, a car's speed can be altered by an accelerator method. And these methods alter the object's private data. So if you accelerate, the value of speed will be increased. If you decelerate, the value of speed will decrease. So depending on the data values, an outside function may be called. Now an example of this is when if your seat belt is not fastened this will trigger an alarm, this will raise an event. So this outside method being called is called raising an event. And all objects belong to a class and this is the same for uh, any object. So for example uh, we can talk about uh, car objects or int objects. They belong to the car class or the int class. Now all objects within a class have the same methods. 
So let's have a look at some uh, methods of a class. First of all, what is a class? Now, a class, if I say to you, uh, computer, you know what we mean by computer. A computer is a machine. Um, at least it has a keyboard, it has a screen, processor and storage. So this is a generic computer, a description of a computer. Now we know that all computers have things in common. And this, if we talk about the class of computer, all computers have the same characteristics or similar characteristics. So think of a class as a description of an object, but not the object itself. It's a bit like the difference between a data type, such as int, and the data value, such as 10. It's a bit like the difference between a chocolate cookie cutter and a chocolate cookie. A cookie, a cookie cutter is not the same as a cookie. A cookie cutter cuts out a cookie. So a class is a template or a blueprint which can generate an object when it's called upon to do so. All of the objects of a particular class have the features specified by that class. So a computer object has features such as a screen, a keyboard, a mouse and so on. Now if you create a class you can create as many classes as you wish. You could have a car class, a student class, a person class, a chair class. As many, uh, as many classes as you wish to define, you can create in your program. Now, once you've got a class, you can create as many objects of a class as you wish. You could have a student class and create 30 students. Now, because real-world objects can be mimicked by computer-programmed objects, then we can create simulations of the real world. So, for example, we could create an airplane object. We can create, uh, we can create an object of a plane and teach a student pilot how to fly a plane, but without actually needing a real plane. So we could have um, a flight simulator, which is a computer program that teaches real pilots how to fly. But if the, um, if the student makes a mistake, they're not going to be any danger and we're not going to lose a plane. So the very first object oriented programming language was called Simula. And it was called Simula because it was a design to produce simulations using classes and objects. And objects belong to a class. So consider a class as a template or a blueprint to create an object. The class contains all of the information required to make the object, to generate the object. Now, objects have properties and they have functions. Now, for example, if you've got an int object, it has a value like 10 and it can do and you can do things with an integer such as add, multiply and so on. Now, any object has got properties and we call those attributes. So, for example, we could have a student with a name. Oh, maybe that's not a good example. Um, say, for example, we could have a car with a name, a size, a color, position and our objects can also perform functions, we call these methods when we're talking about objects. And for example, a car can move, it can make noise, change direction, speed up, slow down. Now, you can instantiate or make an object of a class by assigning the class name followed by any required arguments in the parentheses. So for example, let's have a look how to create a person object. So say we've already created a person class and you'll see how to create in a computer program a class in the next movie. This is how we would make two person objects. So we've got person one is assigned. This is the name of the class person. And in the parentheses, we are sending across the person's name. So person one has a name and 
person two has a name Tom Lee. And once we've created our object, we can then access the attributes of the object, such as their name, by a notation such as this. So if I want to print the name of person one, I can say print in brackets person one dot name. Notice the dot notation. We're linking the object to the attribute. In this case, person 1 has a name Ann Dawson, so Ann Dawson will be printed in this case because the name Ann Dawson was given to the object, person object, which we called person 1. Now, once we've declared our object, we can then access the methods of the object by a notation, a similar notation. So we could say person 1, move left, person 2, speak. And we may decide that we want to send the text to be spoken into the speak method. So I might want to get person one to speak hello. So in that case, I'd put hello in the parentheses of the speak method. And your class definition would have to uh, define exactly what needs to be done for each method and whether the method has uh, arguments or not. For example, I might want to get person 1 to move left by 10 meters, or move right by 5 meters, and so on. So, now the Python language comes with a set of classes already written for you to use. Um, we've seen many of those already, like the list class, the file class, and you can also write your own classes and you can create objects from the classes that you make yourself and just like there are predefined functions and user defined functions there are predefined classes and user defined classes now when we say user defined we actually mean programmer defined classes so in object-oriented programming, programs are designed by identifying what classes of objects are required and by understanding the relationship, the relationships between the objects. And in the next uh, video, I'm going to go to the next topic, which is how do we create Python classes and create objects of those classes in Python 3 programs and that's the topic of the next movie.